Life really sucks sometimes, and I have definitely on occasion wondered why bad things seem to be drawn to me like I'm some sort of magnet. But thinking about this for a bit recently has led me to think about birthday cake. I should point out, by the way, that this video wasn't just an excuse to eat a cake. Though I am still going to do that. Your body is made of an uncountable number of atoms. Bear with me here. A whole bunch of different atoms, uh, mostly hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, but more interestingly, those atoms have come from really interesting places. Because there are so many atoms in your body, you, and every other person alive today, has about 200 billion atoms in them that were once in William Shakespeare. In fact, we all have about 200 billion atoms of pretty much any dead famous person you can think of in us. So. William Shakespeare, the Buddha, Marie Curie. Because generally in our lifetimes atoms just don't get created or destroyed, though they can be through nuclear processes. Most of the time if you find a particular atom, that atom has been that atom for a very long time. So you can trace where the atoms in your body come from. This one in my finger, for example, is an oxygen atom that used to be in Leonardo da Vinci. This hydrogen atom in my hair I breathed in two days ago. Though it's best that I don't get overly attached to any one of these atoms. We turn them over at a pretty colossal rate with our surroundings just by doing human things like breathing. Going back to the cake soon. Promise. What I find most interesting to think about is this. Every atom in me must have come from somewhere. It must have some source or other. And while we do exchange them with our environment at a huge rate every day, some of them will have been with us for a very long time. Some of the atoms in me will have come all the way from the human starter kit that my mum made and so come from her, while some of my other atoms will have come from the drink that I had five minutes ago. And now some of my atoms have come from this chocolate cake. Consider this. You still have atoms in you from every birthday cake you've ever had. A very small number in the grand scheme of your body, but they're still there. You are made, partly, of birthday cake. And extending this, you are made of everything that has ever gone into you. You are literally made of breakfasts, of family dinners, of late night and totally necessary cheesy chips. Your body is the product of all of the inputs that have ever gone into it. And each one of those inputs in some small way still exists in you. Now I talked about birthday cake here because it's pretty much universally thought of as a positive thing, right? Everyone loves birthday cake. But I could have talked about something a bit more negative. I could have talked about the fact that you are partly made of late night comfort food eating sessions where you try and drown your bad feelings in carbs. <laughs> or the fact that you are partly made of the icky cough medicine that you were force fed as a child. So what does all of this have to do with bad things happening to you? Well, in the same way that your body is made of birthday cake and of cough medicine, your mind is the product of every event that has ever happened to you. It's partly made from birthday parties and partly made from funerals, from great victories and from crushing defeats. Every experience in your life to date has shaped who you are today, and that includes both the good stuff and the bad. Now, you can't help the fact that bad things are going to happen to you. That's just part of the deal of being alive, in exactly the same way that you can't control the fact that some of your atoms are going to come from nice sources and some are going to come from not so nice sources. The difference though between the atoms that make up your body and the events that make up your mind is that you have no control over how the atoms in your body determine your life. You do, however, have power over how the events that have happened to you determine who you are. The events you can't change, but you can choose how you interpret those events, how you let them affect you, and whether they have a positive influence on you or a negative one. To ask why do bad things happen to me just isn't meaningful. Bad things happen to everyone by merit of being alive. The choice you have is how you allow the bad things that happen to you to affect the rest of your life. So really the question that you should be asking is how do I deal with the bad things that have happened to me? You can choose to learn from them, or choose to see them as a reflection on you as a person. If you choose to learn from them, hard as that may be, then in the future you will be better equipped to deal with bad things happening to you, whether that means changing your habits or changing your thought patterns in response to the bad things. On the other hand, if you just accept the fact that bad events happening to you is a reflection on you as a person, then you're not going to benefit in any way at all from them happening to you. You're not going to learn anything, and that to me seems a wasted opportunity. If bad stuff is going to happen to you, which, spoiler alert, it will, then you may as well try and take some positives from a bad situation and try and learn something. If you don't already do this, then maybe the next time something bad happens, try it out. Remember, a failure isn't a failure unless you fail to learn. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know I did. And that you've taken something away from it that will help you in your life in some small way. 
Please do leave your stories down in the comments below about how you've learned from bad events that have happened in your life. And if you enjoyed the video, then please consider giving it a like. Thanks very much for watching. And it was completely unrelated to the point of the program. So I basically lost a whole bunch of productivity because of the mistake. Again. Adjusting to Oxford life was simultaneously easy and tough. I was made to feel so welcomed by everybody in St Peter's. It really is the friendliest college and instantly fell at home. So that was easy. The hard part was dealing with the work. 